as the Orange will be in full force as Western Kentucky is in town tonight to take on Oklahoma State in the quarterfinals of the NIT. Before the game, Cowboys head coach Mike Boynton in the locker room. 25 years from now, I promise you, they'll talk about this team. They'll talk about this team who was picked last, left for dead, left out of the tournament, and kept fighting. Wrapped him up, said, let's go. Let's go back. And tonight, you got an opportunity, one more time, to go compete with each other. With each other. And at the end of the day, that's all you can ask for, guys. All the work you put in is for tonight's like tonight. Culminate it, put it together, go out there and have some fun. All right? Got a great opportunity to go out and play against another really good team. Let's go show what we're about. All right? Let's go. <laughs> And here's how they got to this point. The Cowboys, Jeffrey Carroll at 26 points on Monday night, tied a career high, five three pointers as they went on to win 71 and 65. Then out west in LA, Western Kentucky, Justin Johnson had 23 points to lead all scorers as they advance. The winner of this game moves on to Madison Square Garden in New York in the semifinals of the NIT to take on the winner of St. Mary's in Utah, which tips off later tonight. Mike Corey alongside former Princeton and Georgetown head coach John Thompson III as we welcome you to Gallagher Iba Arena. Another outstanding atmosphere here tonight, coach. Mike, this joint is jumping. They've been jumping in here for like the past hour and a half. Let's throw it up and play some ball. And here we go. Western Kentucky with that win the other night. First Pac-12 Pac road win in their history. They're the first since 86 when they beat USC at home. Got here late last night. Shot clock, five to shoot. Rebound McGriff. Starting lineups here tonight in Oklahoma State. And for them, Coach, final game here at home for the seniors. A lot on the line here for them. Final game means a lot. They've meant a lot to this program. As Coach Boynton said in the locker room, I mean, this team will go down in history. He looks at his, this team is laying the foundation for many good things to come. Smith. Right down Darius Thompson from Western Kentucky as you look at their starting five. A group coach that had only one returning player from last year's team, if you can believe that. Now, I think that's something that's amazing. Justin Johnson is the only person that's back from last year's team. Everyone else is a graduate transfer, a regular transfer that sat out last year, or an incoming freshman. I think it also needs to be noted that first possession, when he touched the ball, they doubled him. Oklahoma State doubled him hard and fast right away. They don't want to let him get going. First basket was scored by Dwight Colby for Western Kentucky, and now foul on Darius Thompson. Jeffrey Carroll to put it in. And boy, was he electric the other night with those three-pointers. Oh, he, he was outstanding the other night. He's probably hoping, as the most people in this crowd, that he can pick it up right where he left off. Waters relocates. That's a long two, and it's good. If Oklahoma State shoots the ball well, meaning if they make some threes, it could be, it could be a long night for Western Kentucky. Bearded works his way in, blocked by Carroll. Helltopper's got it back. Hollingsworth, hard to the hole. It got redirected by Waters, and he has it. Nice transition defense right there by Western Kentucky, which is also key. They can limit Oklahoma State's transition opportunities. Jump ball is called, and it stays with Oklahoma State. Rick Stansbury, second season, and has them back in the postseason for the first time since 2013. Western Kentucky, they have played inspired basketball this season. They have. They, actually, they, they really have. Coach Stansbury, Stansbury has this team fired up. They believe. I mean, we're, this is a very hostile environment. They were just as loose as they could be in warm-ups, uh, you know, excited about this opportunity. Carroll fouled on his way in. And 
That is the second personal foul on Darius Thompson, the graduate student for Western Kentucky, and that hurts just two and a half minutes in. It, it really hurts. He's someone that Coach Stansbury do, doesn't take out of the game. He's eighth in the country in, in minutes played, and so they need him on the court. He's added some stability to, to the unit. He's added some shooting to the unit, and so if he's looks like Coach is going to ride with him. And just to put with the new rules, the experimental rules, you know, after five fouls, they're shooting one and one. And right now, they're sitting at two, which puts me into the game. Also, with the experimental rules of the NIT, the lane has been widened. You see the white as the lane here for tonight, as well as the three-point line. Coach talked about the fouls, and the only other one is if you have an offensive rebound, the shot clock is reset to 20, not the full 30. Colby working on Solomon. Nice drive here by Bearden, and he converts. And we're going to see that over and over again. You know, I think that the Western Kentucky team, is, I say, is like an old-fashioned team in that in this day and age of teams shooting so many threes and perimeter basketball, they're going to the cup. They're going to the rim, either on post-ups or on penetration, over and over and over again. We'll step aside. Three minutes gone by in this first quarter. Western Kentucky and Oklahoma State quarterfinals of the NIT. Hilltoppers on top by a point early in an unbelievable atmosphere here tonight in Stillwater. Close to 13,000 strong, almost a sellout here at Gallagher Ibar Arena. Hi, everyone. Mike Corey alongside John Thompson, the third. You and I are like one of 10 people not wearing orange here tonight in this one. It's awesome. The orange, orange and black, they came out today, and they're excited. How about what you've seen so far in the first three minutes of action? You know, it's, it's actually the opposite of what I anticipated in that Oklahoma State is getting fouled and, and getting to the foul line, and that's something that's a staple of Western Kentucky. One of their strengths, Western Kentucky, is the number of foul shots that they take and, and getting to the line and getting to the paint. So far, OK State has been doing that. You and I were talking earlier about the three-point shooting for Oklahoma State. If that goes in the way it was the other night, that could prove to be a damaging thing for Western Kentucky that doesn't shoot a lot of threes. Can't get down early as Solomon follows up the miss for the two. And, and that, that rebound right there is good to see. As we saw in the game on Monday, Solomon sprained his ankle right at the end of the game. He was gimping around and limping around earlier today. He actually came to the gym in a boot. Um, and so to have, see him get that offensive rebound is a good sign. But as you said, if, if Oklahoma State starts making threes and get, getting those down and gets this crowd into the game, and that's, that's, that's what they want. On the other hand, that young man right there, Justin Johnson, he's a man. He's a man. You know, Seth Greenberg always says, you, know, you need dudes. Johnson is, is one of those dudes. That he just comes to play every night. He's a double-double machine. Tough-nosed kid. Tough-nosed kid. Certainly is, and that's two games in a row that Oklahoma State's had to face a guy like him. Stanford's Reed Travis is one of those players as well. And they're very similar. They're very similar. And Coach Boynton pointed that out, that Reed Travis is very similar to Johnson. And they're going to have to do a, 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 they did a good job for stretching on Travis. They're going to have to do that for the entire game against Johnson. Lindy Waters knocks down the jumper. The Cowboys are now in front. And they're going to they're gonna double him right away. Try to get the ball out of his hands. Whenever Johnson gets to the net post, they're going to double him. Josh Anderson shut off on the baseline. Jake Omer. Rebound, Carroll. Carroll coast to coast. Unable to finish, and it's Western Kentucky ball. You see on the shot right there. You got you to put a body on Solomon right there. You can't let him get that easy, that easy basket right there. And then there's that dude, Justin Johnson. We're going to see that all night. The man is extremely persistent. Talk to Solomon before the game as he takes a breather. There was no way that he wasn't going to be in action tonight. Well, this is his last game, win or lose, in this building. And, you know, so there's, there's, right, there's no way he's not going to play tonight. Tough nose kid, heart and soul of Oklahoma. Stay tuned. What a take by Hollingsworth for the Hilltoppers. 
first no, and this and this freshman has been outstanding. Always in attack mode. Big time score has brought a, a, like a life energy to this Western Kentucky team. But he's he's coming at you. He's coming straight. He's coming downhill every time. You got to be prepared to stop that. Also, like we just saw, old fashioned three point play. He makes difficult layups. That that was a tough contested layup over the defender, high off the glass. He makes those. Western Kentucky back up by a deuce. We're halfway through the first quarter of action. As Brandon Averett. Here's McGriff now for three. Rebound Anderson. Josh Anderson, number four, the highest rated recruit that Western Kentucky's had in over 25 years. Top 60 player coming in, and there he is. Freshman, you know, who missed most of the year, the better part of the year, out the first semester for academic reasons. You know, and it must be noted, he's having a lot of success. But when you're academically ineligible, you can't work out and practice with the team. And so not to say he was just floating out there, but he's a freshman who missed the first semester of workouts because of academic reasons, but is still having that very successful season. Hilltoppers get the steal, and that is out of bounds off of Oklahoma State. Johnson to try to feed it down to him. Fifth player in Western Kentucky history with a thousand plus points and a thousand plus rebounds. The senior Johnson, as there's a foul on Carroll, the crowd not thrilled with that. Obviously, that is his second. So you've got Darius Thompson for Western Kentucky with two, and now Carroll picks up his second for Oklahoma State. And the jumper is there again by Hollingsworth. Nice execution right there. The ball went into Johnson, and, and rightfully so. They paid maybe too much attention to him. He makes an easy pass right back to Hollingsworth, but easy put back. There's Averett. Shot clock's inside 10. McGriff. Nice. Nice play by Averett right there. Western Kentucky has to be careful on Averett's penetration. He's not looking to penetrate for himself. He's looking to do what he did right there. Draw a crowd, draw one or two people, and then kick it out. There's no need to overcommit to him. Hollingsworth gets free again, gets the basket, and is fouled. <laughs> you see that nice little teardrop right there? This young fella's a score. Nice crossover, gets in the lane. Nice little push shot right there. Boom. Gets in there, doesn't overpenetrate, pulls up. Bang, and one. How about this guy? Broke his nose twice this season, way back versus San Antonio earlier, and then in the conference title game, was wearing the brace for the first time, now not wearing one. He's the first freshman team captain in the 100-plus year history of the program. And, you know, Coach was saying that that was an easy decision. He was saying this in the preseason. He won every competition. He won every drill. He was the first in the gym, the last to leave. He said it made it easy to name him as captain. Anderson. And Josh Anderson has made it an 18-9 lead for the Hilltoppers, doubling up the Cowboys here early. Now, I told you in warm-ups, the Hilltoppers were just as loose as they can be. They were having, it was, it was their party before the yeah. game. Started out one for four from the field. There's seven for their last nine to take this advantage. McGriff. They're forcing the Cowboys to the outside shot. And then on the offensive end, they're getting right inside. So they're getting inside. They're doing what they do. Fight for it. Ball is loose. Colby had it. But here's Waters for Oklahoma State. Okay. Averett. Got it. The referees are letting them play a little bit. They're not, they're not calling that ticky tack stuff, at least just yet. Here's Colby, that is an offensive foul.
Western Kentucky on top early here in Stillwater. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the NIT is brought to you by BMW. We only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. Experimental rules in this year's NIT as the lane has been widened and the three-point line has been pushed back. It's a couple of the new things that we're working with here tonight. And Coach, you think that that really hasn't affected play too much? Here's another big one, four 10-minute quarters and two free throws with a fifth foul each quarter and the shot clock to 20 seconds on an offensive rebound. In general, from watching the games, I don't think it's affected anything that much, but I think it does affect this Western Kentucky team and what I mean by that so much of their offensive output comes from the foul line and they, they're accustomed to getting in the one and one and then shooting a lot of foul shots for the rest of the half. Interception Johnson. <laughs> quick timeout right there. Let me finish my thought real quick with the quarters you get you have to get the five then second quarter starts it starts back over zero which has limited the amount of times that Western has gone to the foul line in this tournament relative to when you just have seven and a half and so that's you know over time uh, coaches we make adjustments you change you figure it out but that's something that the, that the quarter system in the five fouls each quarter definitely has affected Western Kentucky. How about that last play and Coach Boynton for Oklahoma State infuriated a timeout right after that steal and an easy slam as the Hilltoppers lead it by nine. Hilltoppers are executing at, at the defensive end. You know, they go to a 1-3-1 to switch things up, come away with the steal, get out. There's that dude. I mean, this is what Western Kentucky does. They've got 16 to their 20 points in the paint. So far in this first quarter, we're just over a minute to go. And you said it, we said it just after the ocean. I mean, they attack the rim. They're going to get to the rim. They're not a big three-point shooting team. Even on penetration or on post-ups, they're in the paint the whole game. Waters for three. And rebounded by Josh Anderson for Western Kentucky. Bearden. Omer now takes it in. Waters ahead of the pack and the layup for Shine. Look at the Hilltoppers right back the other way. Bearded. Bearded. Ooh, little dance move right there. He got out of the way down the other end on that fast break. He got out of the way, gave up an easy layup. The came right back and gave it right back to him. Ten seconds to play in the first quarter tonight here in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Averett, no look past Waters, but he couldn't finish. Averett, there's a whistle and a foul, and that is before the end of the quarter. The officials now want to talk it over here. The clock is at zeros. Averett got hit. And Kelly Self had blown the whistle and put his hand in the air. And they're going to go to the monitor and take a look. Now, remember, it's on the contact. So when they go and they look at this, they're going to see, was he fouled before that clock was at triple zeros? We'll see. I thought he was. I thought he was. You have to give Averett some credit. He kind of he went in there, dished it off as we anticipate him doing. That's what he wants to do. Ends up with his own rebound. Solomon has a tip there. Mitch, yes. Solomon has a tip. So the contact does come before absolutely the end of the quarter. Absolutely. Maybe like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 seconds left. We'll see what they end up doing. 22-13, Western Kentucky trying to get to the semifinals of the NIT. Madison Square Garden. That's what's on the line here tonight. And with the NIT runner-up, you go way back to 1942. Everything was back in the... 40s. The last time that Oklahoma State was in the semifinals was 1944. It is a foul on Josh Anderson. And the official just told us that the foul occurred at 0.5 seconds left in this first quarter, so that's what they put back on the clock. 
Anderson picks up his first, number four there for the Hilltoppers. And it's going to be Averett to the free throw line. Easy money here. They thought they were going to be going to the end of the first quarter. At 22-13, gets a chance to put a couple points on the board. Seven-point game. And that's the end of the first quarter. Winner to the semifinals of the NIT. We are back with a second quarter from Stillwater, Oklahoma after this. Coverage of the Division I Men's Basketball Championship Sweet 16 and Regional Semifinals begins Thursday on CBS and TBS at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 Pacific. For matchups and game times, go to NCAA.com. Mike Corey and John Thompson III with you here tonight from Stillwater, Oklahoma. Winner to the semifinals of the NIT to Madison Square Garden. What a crowd here from Gallagher Ibar Arena. They've been waiting for this one and probably one of their best crowds of the season. Yeah, it, it is. You know, one thing I want to note real quickly, it's, it's interesting in that first quarter. Normally, Oklahoma State dictates the pace, dictates the flow of the game with their defense. I think that so far, Western Kentucky is dictating the pace. They've switched up. They played man to man. They've shown a 1 3 1. They've pressured and they played soft. They played different kinds of man to man defense. And Oklahoma State has a hard time getting into a rhythm because of how they subtly keep changing their defense. Anderson's basket has now made it a nine point game and a foul on Omer, his first. And, and Coach Boynton has to be upset. That, that play coming out of the quarter. They worked on in shoot around. He said coming out of timeouts, looked at him to run this little law play, and Weston comes out and executes. Tonight's hit by Mitchell Solomon. And as the Cowboys are within seven. <laughs> Want to try to get it into Mustafa Jun. Now sets a high ball screen for Anderson. Omer on the drive. Solomon the rebound. Shine for three. And here comes the crowd. Not there. Offensive board by John and now a three ball that's off by Omer. Once again, you say, see a red penetration, kicking it out. Nice, pretty three. Averett's been extremely effective with his penetration driving to dish. That was a second personal foul on Anderson. He's played well early here for Western Kentucky. He stays on the floor. Here's Averett, way off of the jumper. And Bearden takes it the other way. Justin Johnson for the alley-oop, and that is Dwight Colby who throws it down. Great pass by Johnson right there. He's so, he's so poised. The double team doesn't phase him. He just absorbs that double team and kicks it out. Averett responds for Oklahoma State. Crowd wanted to travel instead. He gets the basketball. They get to the hole well, don't they? They get, they get to the paint over and over and over again. You know that that's what they're doing, and you can't stop it. You know that's what they want to do, and you can't stop them. 
That's 22 points in the paint. 24 points in the paint for Western Kentucky. They're 28 so far in this first half. Averett! <laughs> Averett came to play tonight. He's been extremely aggressive and effective. Not just aggressive, he's been effective. Averages six points a game. He's already got eight. Collinsworth, the freshman. Four to shoot for Anderson. Waters for three. This crowd's been waiting to really erupt here tonight. <laughs> They're ready to go from level 10 to level 12. Hilltoppers have led by as many as nine. It's four now as there is an offensive foul away from the ball. And it's on Lamonte Bearden. Western Kentucky is shooting 54% so far. And you see two different ways they attack the paint. They get it to Johnson. The double team comes. Great pass to his teammate. And then it's off some old-fashioned old -fashioned penetration. Tap dancing to the hoop. Oklahoma State closing the deficit thanks to Brandon Averett. Without a doubt, young man comes off the bench and has been extremely effective tonight. As you said, has eight points, only averages six. And we're seeing some of his scoring right here, but he also has three assists. He just had the ball in his hands. He's making the correct decisions on when I should go and when I should set my teammates up. Leads the team with three assists. The ball game played just seven minutes on Monday night. Now getting extended minutes and making the most of it. Well, and that just shows the versatility of this team. Now Smith, the starter's back in the game, and you know, obviously you're not going to see any drop off. You see once again here coming out of a timeout, Western Kentucky goes switches defenses again. Goes to one three one right there. Smith for three. Hollingsworth, the fender fell down, and Hollingsworth comes right back with a three ball himself. <laughs> the freshman's wired to score. He's wired to score. The all-time leading scorer for a freshman in Western Kentucky history. And he has been outstanding this season for the Hilltoppers. They are on top by four as we are halfway through the second quarter. And you see, once again, we talked about it. Western Kentucky changes defenses again. And then the 2-3 right there, but Mr. Smith has the answer. Can't forget about Kendall Smith. Last couple baskets for the Cowboys. Poise, and he, he got a lot of rest in that first quarter. As we said, Averett came in and played well. Now he makes things happen on the defensive end. Smith. McGriff there trying to finish, and it's a foul, and it's going to be on him. We see both teams warming up from the perimeter a little bit. Nice hustle play by McGriff, which he does. Kicks it out to Smith. Splash. Then down the other end. Puts him on skates. Hollingsworth crosses him up. Could have been a four-point play right there. Hollingsworth again. Another three-point try. Save result. <laughs> Wired to score. But the young fella goes out and gets buckets. 14 points already for Tabion Hollingsworth. One over his game average. And driving in is Thomas Dezagua for Oklahoma State, and he got fouled. The NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One continues Friday at 7 and 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPN with the Sweet 16 matchups. Mississippi State and NC State and Louisville and Stanford. Remember, all games are streaming live at the ESPN app as well. You know, one thing that's very important to note right there, 
is Josh Anderson just picked up his third foul. Right. You know, coach left him in the game, which which I think he had to do. But now he's got his third foul. Probably will sit the rest of the half. And he's been affected. He hasn't scored a lot, but he's controlled the pace of the game for Western Kentucky. Let's see if there's a dip off now that he goes out. Still four minutes to play in the half. After the free throws by Desagua, it's a three-point ball game. Johnson, so versatile with his game. So versatile, so poised. Right back the other way, it's Shine who nails a three. The fans love it. Bearden, tough shot, and the follow is there by Colby. Tavares Shine directing traffic. Stays with the Cowboys for 14 to shoot as Carroll and Waters return to the lineup for them. You know, Oklahoma State is much a much deeper team than mm -hmm. Western Kentucky. You see how they just keep shuttling two and three guys in. Western doesn't have that luxury. You know, we, we mentioned a few seconds ago that Anderson picked up his third. Right now, we see Bearden going out of the game limping. There's something wrong with his foot or ankle. Think about Western Kentucky he had only seven scholarship players for basically the first semester because Anderson and John were not eligible until the second semester. Now they at least have nine. Yeah, and so they're used to playing big minutes, but this Oklahoma State pressure wears on you. It wears on you, and we'll see how it affects them the latter stages of this game. Johnson puts up a three ball. There's a foul on the rebound. And it's going to be on Oklahoma State. We'll return after this. Hollingsworth having a night. The freshman for Western Kentucky has nailed a couple of huge threes here. Oklahoma State trying to respond themselves. Tavares Shine getting the crowd into it from the corner. And we'll be back to Stillwater, Oklahoma. Winner moves on to the semifinals of the NIT. Sports Center comes your way tonight after Wizards Spurs on ESPN with Scott Van Pelt. A complete recap of the Raptors and Cavs, plus Tiger talking about his game as he ramps up for the Masters. Nevada, we'll talk about them. And head coach Eric Musselman joins the show to talk about how they got to the Sweet 16. It's Sports Center with SVP, Midnight Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. You know, I think it's worth noting that Western leads the points in the paint battle. 26 to 10. And, and as I said earlier, I don't know whether it's because of the, the experimental quarter system, you know, but Western's only taking two foul shots. And they're used to going to the line a lot more than that. This, we're talking about a team that has made 89 more foul shots than the, their opposition has attempted. Right. They've made, coming into this game, 589 foul shots. Their, their opposition has only attempted 500. So that's you know, as we look at and, and analyze these experimental rules, that that's maybe, maybe the game's moving faster, but that affects teams like Western in that regard. Inside, nice feed, and Shine makes it a two-point game. No weak side help right there for Western. And, and Mr. Averett goes out in the second quarter. Mr. Sean is picking up the scoring load at this 10th point. Justin Johnson. Double team comes down. Colby now. Battling. Wow. Grown man move. Another two points in the paint. Patient down there. Just patient. Got to where he went. Got to his spot. Took the shot he wanted to take. Graduate transfer, started his career at Ole Miss, Kansas, and now here in Western Kentucky. And Siva, the offensive rebound.
Hollingsworth was quiet in the crowd a few times tonight. Johnson's try. Seema corrals it. Waters. They got to be careful. They keep going under screens on Waters. He's too good of a shooter for that. Shot clock down to eight. 42 seconds left, first half. Smith rejected by Colby, but it's Seba. He couldn't get it. And it's a shot clock violation. Timeout, Western Kentucky. A lot happening on that last sequence there, Coach. A, a lot did happen right there. But let's look at the previous two possessions. Nice little shuffle cut right there. No help side, no ball pressure. They get an easy layup right there. And then Seema's just too long. He's just too long. He goes in upstairs and gets that. That's easy. Last so possession. Smith got blocked and another block. So, yeah, that is a shot clock violation. Yes, it is. And you see the last few possessions, I'm going to say last five, Coach Stansbury is just trying to get out of this half. He's got foul trouble with Anderson on the bench. He's got Bearden, who's, who's out there again, but limping a little bit. I and mean, he's slowed everything down, just trying to get out of this half. They're up two. About a three and a half second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. Stay tuned to the half. Chris Cotter, Seth Greenberg of the studio standing by. Under 20 seconds left. Western Kentucky, they've led by as many as nine tonight. Hollingsworth for three. He does it again. They left the, they left the wrong man. You can't leave him to go double. 17 first half points. Here's a three by Smith, and he responds. Atmosphere here tonight. Unbelievable, unbelievable ending. A couple of threes. First Hollingsworth. Bang. Now you get all of a sudden go down the other end. Smith comes back and Oklahoma State down by two at the break as we go to the studio for the halftime report at Chris Connor and Seth Greenberg, guys. State's Kendall Smith is three-pointer at the end of the half. Brought the Cowboys within two as they trail it 43 to 41 as we get set for the start of the second half tonight from Stillwater, Oklahoma. Good to have you with us here tonight, everyone. The winner moves on to the semifinals of the NIT at Madison Square Garden in New York. Mike Corey, Coach John Thompson III. How about the Hilltoppers, though, inside? Boy, they're getting it done. Well, they, they do what they do. In this day and age where everyone wants to shoot threes, the Hilltoppers' goal is to get to the cup, either on penetration or on post-ups. They want to get the ball in the paint. And they, and they do it different ways. They get out in transition, they get some baskets, they throw it down on old-fashioned post-up, very good passing team out of it. Johnson's going to be double, so he knows to look for the pass, and then just straight up post-ups. They lead the points in the paint, 28 to 14. And then you have this young man, this fresh, woo, broke his ankles. This young man can warm up. I said the whole first half, he's wired to score. He's just one of these people that finds a way to get buckets. He can make shots. He can penetrate. He's just going to find a way to put the ball in the basket. They're going to need him to do that. And also going to need Anderson to stay out of foul trouble this half to have some success. On the other side, if you're Oklahoma State, your leading scorer in Jeffrey Carroll has been held in check. He's only got one point. Solomon really hasn't gotten involved yet either. You're only down by three points. No, in, in many ways, you have to feel pretty good about where you stand if you're Oklahoma State because of what you just expressed. You know, your leading scorer has one point. And you've made up for some of the, the your deficiencies offensively by 
you know, the fast, they're leading in fast break points, 13 to 4. They're leading in second chance points. They're finding different ways to score other than making shots. Solomon picked up his first personal foul for the Cowboys. Colby is knocked out of bounds by Oklahoma State with eight to shoot. Another three, Hollingsworth. Get out of town, wow. Get out of town, they better find out where that young man is and keep an eye on him. He's yet to miss from three-point range, four for four with 20 points. Solomon. It's Carroll for three. Heads up, ball's coming up. Well, there he is, coach. Mr. Carroll, I mean, he, he, he put them on his back in the previous round. Just pass the ball around right there, hand down, man down. You have to be much closer to him than that. Don't let the fact that he only has one point, had one point, no, don't forget what a great scorer he is. Here's Smith. Carroll Long at the A range three. Not there. I like the way Colby went and got that rebound out of his area. I mean, he, he went two, three bodies over and chased down that rebound. Allingsworth. Gets blocked a little, and then all of a sudden, Colby tips it up and in. And then Colby goes and gets another rebound out of his area. Smith is fouled, and Hollingsworth picks that one up. You see Colby being the opportunist right here. Hollingsworth boogieing in their misses. Colby following statuativeness, aggressiveness, making himself a valuable member of this team. Just from his hustle and his effort. I mean, it's, it's just he's a worker. Colby's from the Bahamas. And that team, Western Kentucky, went down there and won almost won all three of their games earlier this year. They lost to Villanova by only eight points. Had the entire team, 60-plus people over at his house down there. A great experience for the Hilltoppers. Offensive Hello. rebound. Here's Carroll again. And we're at that point as we were the whole first half where this crowd is just waiting to explode again. High dribble by Bearden. No call. Justin Johnson, tough fadeaway. Rebound, Hollingsworth. That's what we, different ways to get points in the paint. This team is, you have to find him and box him out. Kendall Smith, another three, hit the one at the end of the half, and this one again brings him within two. Bearded, what about the dribbling and the crossover by Lamonte Bearded? Hey man, we got our old fashioned shootout at the OK Corral right now. Yeah. Both teams are just scoring. Smith is blocked by Colby. As Tavares Shine checks back in for Oklahoma State. And Cameron McGriff heads to the bench. Waters got blocked. And here come the Hilltoppers, three on two. Bearded, it's a blocking foul on the Cowboys. And there's a little extra activity at the end of the play. You don't think this is heated tonight? Winner to Madison Square Garden in New York in the semifinals. Four-point lead for Western Kentucky. We'll be back.
Catch every moment of the 2018 NCAA Women's Championship on the ESPN Family and Networks. For more information, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Oklahoma State, how about some of the wins they had this year? Try beating Kansas twice in the regular season. Kendall Smith, a career-high 25 points. And then in the Big 12 tournament, Malik Newman, a career-high 30. And they beat the Cowboys by 14 on Thursday to reach the Big 12 semifinals a week ago. But some of these wins this season by the Cowboys coach have been spectacular. It, it has been. And, you know, they had a lot of justified disappointment on selection Sunday night. When you look at what they have gone on, their body of work, the number you beat, you beat a West Virginia. You said we beat Kansas twice. You beat mm -hmm. Oklahoma twice. You beat Texas Tech. You know, and they went out and did what they thought they needed to do to get into the tournament. It was extremely disappointing. But you have to commend them on not dwelling in that and playing well as they head into this tournament. Foul on Western Kentucky. Hollingsworth can't believe it. It's a second. And now you see both teams. Western comes out of that timeout. They go back to the 1-3-1. One, one. And, you know, and their 1-3-1 one, is, is extremely spread out in the passing lane, similar to, to what well, in fact, it, it, it disrupts you. They get in the passing lanes. They force you to go into bodies like they did right there. Uh, John Beeline, who's now at, at, at Michigan, used to do that at West Virginia. He's in the passing lanes. He's not sure where to go. There are too many bodies right there. Nice change of pace coming out of the timeout for Coach Stansbury. That is a foul on Kendall Smith as he gives it right back with his second. And then I, I anticipate Western only staying in that one or two more possessions. They're not going to stay in it. They just keep throwing it at you to keep you off kilter, off rhythm. Good entry pass into the post. Colby through traffic. Hilltoppers ball. Great effort too by Oklahoma State. Both teams, man. I mean, both teams, I mean, this might sound simple, but they're playing the win. They're giving the effort. They're giving the energy. This is a fun game to be a part really of. Yes. High-level basketball here tonight for sure. Johnson. Traveling violation. Now, now, this Western Kentucky team has been successful this year because I think they've been extremely poised. They have seniors with Johnson and some graduate transfers with some freshmen. They have to make sure at this point right here they stay poised. Some of their younger guys, particularly Hollingsworth, who's having a great game, is starting to react to every call. He's got to just calm down just a little bit. Well, think about how young this Western Kentucky team is as well. They've got four freshmen that they've thrown out there this season, including that guy, number 13, Tavion Hollingsworth, who's the first freshman team captain in the 100-plus year history of the program. He's a guy that averaged 13 points a ball game. He's been outstanding. And the future looking very bright for them. You know, right here, Oklahoma says has to throw skip passes diagonal passes and then attack against this 1-3-1. Averett through a triple team, wild shot, had to, shot clock is winding down. But you can't just try to pass it around the perimeter and get passive. You have to throw X passes or cross passes, then look to quickly attack. Let me ask you that, what are you talking there with an X pass, what's that? Well, from, from one, let's say you're facing the basket right side up top to the opposite diagonal corner, diagonal passes. Are, are what's open. They want you just to try to swing the ball or dribble and penetrate in, into the zone. Johnson hoists up a three. Here comes Averett. Well, let's see what they do on this possession. Shine blocked by Johnson. What a play. Crossover. Bearden. Yes. Points in the paint. Now Weston's going to get it. No, they stay in it. And see, the only way to attack it is to beat it down the court. Don't let that zone get set. So high up, they're defending it, they get a steal. Thompson. Johnson. Timeout, Oklahoma State. It's a 7-0 Western Kentucky run. Capped by Justin Johnson here on the road.
Defense turning to offense here, coach, in the last play for the Hilltoppers. Defense turning to offense. Oh, Mr. Johnson right there. Spectacular block down that end. Next possession, they get a turnover, fills the lane. Nice transition basket. Now we got to see. Now how how is how the Cowboys going to respond to this 1-3-1? One, one? They're dribbling into they, they've been turning the ball over. They're dribbling into bodies. And now they show the 1-3-1 one, one and go back to man to man. Switch up their defenses again, did the Hilltoppers. And they get it inside of McGriff. That's a foul. And McGriff will shoot two as Dwight Colby picks up his first personal for Western Kentucky. 13-5. Cameron McGriff has been outstanding at the free throw line. Last 10 games, 37 of 40. to make it 38 of 41. Let's look and see if Oklahoma State kind of tries to return the favor a little bit. Let's see if they pick up full court. Maybe it'll give a little token press just to switch things up a little bit for Western. Hey coach, this is really a critical moment in time here right now in this third quarter for Oklahoma State. I mean, this lead was being pushed close to the double-digit range by Western Kentucky. It, 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 without a doubt, is a critical moment. This Western team is just so poised, though. Just beat USC on the road Monday night. Now Hollingsworth, who's been outstanding, finally misses a three. It's his first miss from beyond the arc tonight. And that one's right there. Averett, with that huge first half performance. And eight points. Waters, three ball, count it! <laughs> Open is Thompson. Passes up the three and is fouled on his way in, and Waters will pick up that ticket. A couple of things down at the other end where we see this three down here. Once again, on Averett's penetration, stay at home. He, most of the time, he's penetrating, looking for that pass right there. Johnson shouldn't creep in there. Stay at home on Waters, who might be the best shooter on their team. Under our experimental rules in the NIT this season, there are four 10-minute quarters, and when a team commits five, Team fouls, the opponent shoots an automatic two at the line. So that's what we have here with Thompson. And we'll get another. And that'll reset at the end of the quarter when we go to the fourth. Here's the difference in rules for the NIT. Shot clock resets to 20 after an offensive rebound. The three-point line is a little deeper and the lane is a little wider as well. And so Weston will be shooting two foul shots on every foul for the rest of this quarter. First point for Thompson tonight. McGriff inside. Count it. That's a two for one right there for Oklahoma State. They're within three. Hollingsworth. He got bumped. And that basket does not count. Western Kentucky can't believe it. They're going to say a two-shot foul. Rick Stansbury says, how is that not a three-point play opportunity? Because we've got a timeout. We're going to take a look at it as we go to break. Because Coach Stansbury and his team are fired up. You see the penetration right there. You know, I think I might have given him that basket right there. We see a second look, a little bump right there. He picks it up, it goes up. I think that's the end one myself. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the NIT is brought to you by Papa John's. Two large one topping pizzas, just $7.77 each. 
Welcome back to Stillwater, Oklahoma. Hollingsworth thought he had an and one there. How about the reaction with Rex Stansbury and Byron Jarrett, our official? Hey, man, who's, who says Stansbury is not emotional? It's not passionate. <laughs> this is, we can't take the emotion out of this game. This is, these two teams are competing. You ever do that, coach? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Corey alongside former Princeton and Georgetown coach John Thompson the third with you here tonight from Gallagher Iba Arena. Let's see if they go back to that 1-3-1. One, one. Yes, they do. So Hollingsworth takes the two at the line. And it's a five-point game now in favor of the Hilltoppers. Shine for three. Down any more. Worth. Rebound Carroll, look out. Here come the Cowboys. Shine again for the lead. Waters tracks it down. Oh man, are we having fun yet? <laughs> Last time Oklahoma State led was seven to six. McGriff, no. Offensive board, and he is fouled. That's Hollingsworth now with his third personal foul. Remember, the students are on spring break here at Stillwater. Coach, you wouldn't know it. What an atmosphere tonight! You wouldn't know it at all. I think the students may not be, be may not be here, but everyone else who's in the house is, has the place jumping. Dangerous inbounds pass. McGriff has it to Carroll. Carroll for three of the lead. Rebound, Western Kentucky, Hollingsworth. Coach Stansbury is just starting to steal some time again. Anderson. Trying to go down low. Instead, it's an offensive foul on Mustafa John. And you see him posting up right down there. He extends that arm. No need to do that with the little guy. He's extended his arm. And That's Coach a great was, call. Was, was trying to steal some minutes. He had Colby on the bench right there, who he just brought back in the game. I think he had Bearden on the, on the bench right there who he just brought back in the game. And that's when they're trying to, to steal some minutes with Jung right there. And now Averett. And a foul is called, and that is going to be on Josh Anderson. That's his fourth for the Hilltoppers. And free throws now for Oklahoma State. As that's the sixth team foul this quarter. Once you get to five, it's an automatic two. So Carroll will try to tie this game. And, and the Hilltoppers right now are, are slightly too preoccupied with the officials. Now, they feel they're getting a bad whistle, which I understand. But every time there's a call, there's a motion, there's a gyration, there's an explanation, there's flailing of their arms. A lot of times people forget the officials are human too. Right. If they think you're showing them up, all of a sudden you're not going to get the 50-50 calls. It's a great point, Coach. They have to watch it. Tie game. Crowd rising to their feet here at Stillwater. Up. Heads up, check your head. Kobe <laughs> went to the room with bad intentions right there. Yeah, that stops uh, Oklahoma State 12 to 3 run over the last three and a half minutes. And from a tie game, back to a hilltopper advantage, and here's Bearden, and he'll extend it. 
That happened fast. Carroll for three. See, they've been successful against this 1-3-1. And that, and that shot right there by Carroll didn't go in. So when they attack before the zone gets set. When Western, Western Kentucky's zone has been set, it's been extremely effective. Them stretching out, playing those passing lanes. Solid job here to end this quarter by Western Kentucky. We get the quick two points. It's another one. Defensive stop. Bearden, that's a travel. Well, as I say that, they've left 5.2 on the clock for Oklahoma State. And to see if they can get some penetration and driving kick to Carroll. It's Smith right now. Smith, that's good if it goes. And that's the end of three. So the Hilltoppers, after the Cowboys tied it at 60, they come right back. Colby with authority as we head to the fourth at Stillwater. The Hilltoppers lead by four. appearance for Western Kentucky in the NIT. 12 for the Cowboys and the winner moves on to the semifinals in New York. Madison Square Garden to take on the winner of St. Mary's in Utah which comes your way right here on the Deuce next after we are done in Stillwater. Mike Corey, Coach John Thompson the third. What an atmosphere. What a place to watch and call a game here at Gallagher Iba Arena home of the Cowboys. Hey man, I gotta come to Stillwater more often. Right? This has been great. Well, we spent some time here. We've been we, here for we five have days. Spent some time, some time. <laughs> we, we did a previous game for Oklahoma State, which is fun. And now here they are tonight, trying to get to the semifinals. And 10 minutes on the clock in our fourth quarter from Stillwater. Carroll. Colby and McGriff battling for it, and it's out of bounds off of McGriff of Oklahoma State. Now, if this is going to sound simple. But this last nine minutes and 45 seconds, the team that stays the most poised, the team that executes their game plan, the team that doesn't get rattled by the situation is the team that's going to win. Like, and that sounds really simple, but both teams here have to slow down and breathe a little bit and execute. Right at, Coming out, you see Weston trying to go right back to that paint, trying to go back to Justin Johnson in the paint. If, can they successfully do that? Can they? What's key right there? Less than 30 seconds into the half. They already pick up a foul. Can they get into that one and one quickly here? Well, you just said it, and it happens that quick. There was a second foul on Waters, and now before the inbound, we have another one. And it's on Waters again. So he picks up two in a row. He's got three. Second team foul, and as you said, on the fifth team foul, Western Kentucky shoots free throws. Here's an alley -oop. And Colby from Bearden. It's key. I mean, they, they, who's going to stay poised? Who's going to execute? Less than a minute in, they have two quick fouls already. The only difference is, Coach, that Oklahoma State's got 13,000 fans on their side and Western Kentucky not as many. And there's a foul here as Carroll goes baseline. You see on this inbounds where you have early cutters to draw the defense down. Then the third cutter is cold, but you just throw it up. The first two cutters flattened out that zone. And then they get the lob. So Coach Stansbury just got a warning for being out of the coach's box. You know, the only thing I'll say to that is I talked about which team stays the most poised. I hope these officials stay poised coming down the stretch right here also. Well, and, and you add to it, the coaches staying poised too. You know, your players get their cue from their coach. I mean, that's... Can't have anything disrupt the flow, especially if you're Western Kentucky right now. A six-point advantage, playing well on both ends. And again, almost a turnover. Solomon blocks and fouled by Colby. He's third. Team second. Both teams have two with less, than, with less than a minute gone by in this half. Mitchell Solomon. Senior for Oklahoma State. His final ever game here at home. Sprained his ankle at the last play of the game for him will be fouled out on Monday. And he's out there battling here tonight. 
and we don't expect anything less from him. I mean, he's the heart and soul of this team. He sacrificed so much of his, literally his body for this program. I said this the other night. He said something I thought that was great. I was asking him about playing for his third coach. And he said, no, nah, Coach Thompson, it's been great. Most people only get the opportunity to learn from one coach. I've had, I've been blessed to learn from three different really good coaches. That's, that says something about him to, to, no. to look at it through that lens. No doubt. Great way to look at it. Four-point game in favor of the Hilltoppers. Johnson slings it in there to Colby. Rebound, Averett. Smith wanted Solomon on the cut. Instead, it's McGriff for three. Solomon tapped it out, but right to Hollingsworth. Foul, and that basket counts. That's just bad luck right there. Solomon could have grabbed that. He thought he was tapping it to a teammate. Instead, his tap leads into a transition basket. McGriff with the shot. Solomon thinks he's tapping it to McGriff. It ends up being a breakaway for the Hilltoppers. Take notice is right. Western Kentucky has got a good one for a long time. Hollingsworth. As the freshman connects on a three-point play. Coach said that he it was an easy decision to make it a team captain because he leads this team in conditioning and leads by example. He said the young freshman in the fall in the preseason was first in every every drill that they did. And I tell you what, whenever this crowd is ready to erupt, he's the one that's making plays in this major playoff game. You're absolutely right. This is going to stay with the Cowboys. Two minutes into this fourth quarter, they trail by seven now. After we were tied at 60, it's been a 9-2 Hilltoppers run. Smith for three. McGriff the rebound, and he was fouled. That is number four on Colby. And they cannot afford for Colby to be out of this game. We're going to see if Coach tries to, to steal some minutes, maybe go back to that 1-3-1, one, one, but he can't be out for a sustained period of time. Well, he's got Josh Anderson up off the bench. Couldn't get him in in time, and McGriff nails it. Poise. Who's going to stay the most poised? Who's going to execute? Let's look for Weston to go to Johnson right here. Bearden, nifty dribbling again. Solomon. It's a foot race, Smith. Rebounded by Johnson. Darius Thompson in foul trouble early. Seeing way more minutes now back here in the second half. Johnson, yes, on the hook. Timeout, Hilltoppers with 7.04 to go. You know, they've had some young men. We've talked about Hollingsworth a lot, who's been outstanding tonight. We've talked about Bearden, who's been outstanding. But as we come down to money time, as we come down to winning time, this is who the Hilltoppers are going to go to. They're going to go to Justin Johnson, all-conference player, the double-double machine, the blood, the man who's, who's, who's the heart and soul, blood, sweat, and tears of the team. They're going to come to him. He's never going to forget this season. Before the senior day game on senior night, he proposed to his girlfriend, now fiance, Keely Rogers. What a moment for him. He met her five years ago this Friday. She was a basketball player back in high school. And after that, went out and had 14 points in the first four minutes of the ball game on senior day. And has had one amazing season. 23 points in the last game in the win over USC to earn the right to be here tonight. Smith from Solomon. And so right now, because of foul trouble, you got to take Colby out. 
You put Johnson in at the center position. They, they get out of the 1-3-1 one, one and go to a 2-3. Waddles and a rejection. Smith somehow got it to shine. And there's a foul. And Smith is in there to try to get the board. Josh Anderson. And that is going to do it. That is his fifth personal foul. Six and a half to play in this contest. Five point lead here for the Hilltoppers. All right, Chris, Seth, thanks very much. What a game here tonight as Western Kentucky still has the advantage of five point lead with 632 to go. As Kendall Smith heads to the free throw line for the Cowboys. What are you looking for here from them as they try to mount this comeback yet again? Well, you know, they're going to have to get some easy baskets in transition, which they, they, when they've been able to get out and run, you know, they, they have been had pretty su a lot of success. They can't keep fighting against that half-court uh, defense. You also see Coach Stan Stansbury. He's a gambling man. Six, 632 left. He puts in Colby back in now with the four fouls. That's number well, 22 in red for the Hilltoppers. 48 points in the paint, 48 to 18 in favor of Western Kentucky. Here is Colby. Foul. And once again, they go to Johnson. If you don't double him, he backs you down to where he wants to and gets a little jump hook like he did two possessions ago. If you double him, he knows what his reads are. He knows what his looks are. He's a great pass rider. Doing their best to the straps, and it paid off. Carroll is back in for McGriff for Oklahoma State. And there you see Coach Blinton doing a little, little offense defense substitution right there. Bringing Carroll back in for offense. And you know Carroll's not worried about it, but he's one for eight from the field tonight. Six points, so he is liable to go off if you allow him to. Still six minutes left in this one. Solomon trapped. Waters, and there it is. Here's Carroll for three. Side by Darius Thompson, and there is a foul. Down the other end, you got to give Solomon the hockey assist. He absorbs that double team, is patient, boom, hits waters, Carroll gets a shot in the corner, and then down the other end. I mean, it's just straight hustle right there by Hollingsworth. He comes up with the offensive rebound, kicks it to Thompson, spins, old fashioned three point play. That's his first field goal tonight. And they got Solomon on a cheap foul at the end of it. So now Western Kentucky, this four-point advantage. Western goes back to straight man-to-man. -man. He's the passer right now. Solomon got his own rebound. Count it. like the national championship here tonight. It absolutely does. Going back inside. Hollingsworth. He did it so many times, quieting the crowd. Now here's Smith. Who will get away with a little push off. And Hollingsworth is called for the foul. Western Kentucky, 22-0 this season. 
and leading with five minutes left and 35 and 0 under coach Stansbury as we have 431 left and they are hanging on to a two point lead and it stays that way Smith has another execution even that last possession down there Western got what they wanted they threw it into Johnson he absorbed the double team kicked it out to Hollingsworth the ball just didn't go in absolutely nothing wrong with that set at all and now it's a one point game got to keep an eye on Hollingsworth he also has four personal fouls so does Colby and now you got the offense defense substitution again McGriff comes in for defense Carroll goes out for defense You've got to go back to Johnson again. Stillwater crowd on their feet. Colby. Here's Thompson for three. Got it. Oh, man, what a shot from Darius Thompson. Poise, man. Not rattled. Great execution right there. They tried to go. To Johnson made the right decision. Shine. That's good D by Bearden. And it's going to stay with the Cowboys. Carroll coming back in. Oh, now there's a push and shoving going on between Shine of Oklahoma State and Bearden of Western Kentucky. You've been talking about poise, coach, but we do not see it there in that sequence. Yeah, and both, both teams, everyone needs to calm down. Bearden gets a tech right there. Technical foul's been assessed to both of them. Shine for Oklahoma State and Bearden for Western Kentucky. Coach Stanbury, they got to kind of hold him back, Coach. And he is right in the official's face there in Marquise Pettigrew. And now the officials will discuss. Well, Coach, Coach Stanberg's assistants need to go grab him right now. He's extremely emotional. As an assistant coach right now, as a head coach, you need, you need your right-hand man to come grab you and pull you back right now. And the officials are at the monitor to take a look and see if there was anything else that happened. A little bit of a headbutt there, Coach. A little bit of a headbutt. Yeah. That, that, that was a headbutt. Two guys just standing there having a nice little Wednesday afternoon conversation, and then, 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 then Sean headbutts the kid. Just a little casual conversation. A technical has been assessed to each player. Lamonte Bearden for Western Kentucky. And Tavares shine for Oklahoma State. Is there anything more that's going to be tacked on? We'll find out. 352 left. Four point lead for the Hilltoppers. And so just as important right now, okay, the refs are going to sort through whatever and however they're going to call what just happened. Both programs, both coaches, both teams need to, and I've been saying this since the start of this quarter. Okay, now, okay, we're through that. Let's not live in that moment. It's 352. We have a four-point game, four-point deficit if you're if you're Oklahoma State, four-point lead if you're Western. Now how are we gonna score? Who's shooting? Who we wanna go to? How do we wanna execute? Let's make sure, fellas, on every shot, we're checking, we're boxing out, we're running down the long rebounds. Make sure on every reception you're running through the pass to receive the ball strong because teams are gonna now start taking chances. Let's dot our I's and cross our T's right now. Let's get past that emotional moment. Mm -hmm. Let's dot our I's and cross our T's right now. It's got to be that specific. It's got to be that precise in this type of ball game here in these late stages, to your point. The double technical stays, and our officials just told us they also have a dead ball contact foul technical on, he said zero, he and said that's zero. Brandon Averett. And if it's him, he, I don't believe he was in the game. So yeah, I don't think so. Off the bench. And that's the only zero we've got out there on the court. We'll get it sorted out here in a second.
Kelly Self, one of our officials, still talking to Coach Mike Boynton for Oklahoma State, giving him the explanation. I told you we need the players to be poised, we need the coaches to be poised, we, we need the officials to be poised also. We also have a gift ball contact foul on Evo Brendan. Evo Brett is second. Coach, if you go back to that sequence, they're telling us Averett on that headbutt, but I think they got the number wrong. Uh, it, it was Sean, it was wasn't Sean, it? Sean, right? We're going to have to go back and take a look at that play again. I mean, it definitely was Sean, and he definitely said Averett. Bearden shooting two free throws. Gets one of two. All right, the have corrected yeah, they've corrected it. Now I see him over here saying number five. Okay. Well, he's shot. Yeah. Yeah, Averett wasn't involved in that, so they just got the number wrong. So shine. Yes. So what happened was was there was a dead ball technical foul assessed to both and then another one shined because of the headbutt and that's why we have the two free throws and Western Kentucky has possession. Correct. So they got one of the two free throws. They're up five. They've got the ball and here we go. Here we go. And Shine has fouled out because that's five personals now. Dead ball contact foul and the technical run to by Morris Shine. Dead ball contact foul and a technical called on Savara Shine. So that's four and five, and he's fouled out. And I think that's the right call. Right. That's what the tech was for. And then just that right there is, is the double tech right there. So the headbutt got him one tech. The little extracurriculars Second got the double tech. Exactly. It's been a long time since we've been back to action here, Coach. I mean, it's been about seven, eight minutes. The fans are anxious. And we got 352. Both coaches are fired up. Sean has to leave the court. Pass gets into Bearden. Rips it away from Smith. And here he comes. Johnson for three. That could be huge. Rebound Smith. No, you want to go to Johnson, but you want to go to him in the paint on the block. Let him do work down there. Rebound Bearden. Don't know if you need that quick shot, right? No, you don't. You don't. They, Western doesn't. Oklahoma State might. Here in a spin move. Colby's got the offensive board, and he got fouled. Now, let me just say this. I love Bearden's confidence. I love his swag, as people say. But right now, they don't need him to come down with this lead, with this time, to try to go one on four. No. Now, you're lucky you got Kobe, the big fella down there, to clean everything up. But they don't necessarily need him to try to shut the crowd up, which is what Bearden was trying to do right there. That is four fouls on Waters for Oklahoma State. Players for both teams in foul trouble right now as we near the end of this one. Just over three minutes left. Colby. You got to credit the Hilltoppers for their Composure for the most part, coach, in this crazy environment as they lead by seven. Without a doubt. Averett, no. Rebound by Colby. He's done a little bit of everything tonight for Western Kentucky. He's put this team on those big broad shoulders of his.
Feared in. That is whipped away by Solomon. Averett counted. Bearden's got to calm down right now. He's looking to boogie. That's where you got to go. Let him make the decision. Nice Johnson kick. gets it right up at Hollingsworth. How did that happen? Rebound Solomon though. And that could have really put the hurt on. Instead, it's Bearden with a foul. Free throws coming for Waters when we come back. Cowboys can cut it to three. They got to get out in transition. That's what you said, Coach. They did here with Averett. Can they mount the comeback? We'll find out when we return to Stillwater. Stay tuned. Hi, Chris. Thanks very much. We can stay here all night, Coach, right, with the way this atmosphere is and the fun game that we're watching here tonight. We can stay here, man. We have two teams that are really competing. Waters was fouled before the timeout. This can cut it to three. He's got a career-high six assists tonight. Versatile sophomore has brought his team within three. Crowd rising to their feet. Two minutes to go. Thompson works by Waters. Solomon's there, and he's called for the foul. That's the right call. I was glad to see Western Kentucky get the ball out of Bearden's hands, to be quite honest. He had a couple of rough possessions. Poor decision. He was stripped by Solomon. Foul down the other end. That time they got Thompson going downhill. Carroll back in for Averett. Lead is back to five. Thompson had foul trouble the first half, no points. Nine here in the second half. And they're just going to keep getting Smith with a middle ball screen, get him coming downhill and let him make decisions. Minute 40 left. There is Smith. Rejected. And that was Colby. That was Colby. The big broad shoulders. How big will that play be? We'll find out as Smith fouls Bearden as they try to save a little bit of clock here. Back to the block. Kobe just keeps making winning plays. Smith thinks he has clear sailing. No, sir. Mr. Kobe comes over. Great weak side help right there. Doesn't foul him. Keeps the ball in bounds. Kobe's been outstanding. Over 60 blocks on the season to lead his team. Bearden, big free throws. Timeout, Western Kentucky. Let's go back to the studio. Chris Cotter. That's what's on the line here tonight. A trip to New York. Will it be Western Kentucky or Oklahoma State? It's a seven-point lead. Hilltoppers have led by as many as nine. And, and they've been steady. You know, when, whenever we get to a point where this crowd is ready to erupt, all of a sudden the Hilltoppers, they have an answer. More often than not, coming down this second half here, it's been Mr. Colby who's making winning plays, whether it's at the offensive end or the defensive end. He's made his presence felt time and time again when it felt like Oklahoma State was about to make that run. 
So many fun players to watch, not just in this game, but overall this entire tournament. The NIT has had some really, really good teams, you know, this season. We've been watching some high level basketball. No, we have, and, and, and the four teams that go to New York, you know, I'm excited for the group that's going to be able to watch that team. And those teams, those two, those two, those sets of games. I mean, it's, it's going to be high level basketball in the garden, in the Mecca, as it should be. Mississippi State taking on Penn State. What a great year the Nittany Lions have had. And who is going to join them? All knocked out by Hollingsworth. Coming out. Of, you know, Coach Stansbury is a wily old veteran. You know, coming out of that, Coach Boynton had his man-to-man his -man play drawn up. Coach Stansbury throws that one through one back at him again. Now here we're in the cat and mouse game now. Is, is Western Kentucky going to stay in that 1-3-1? Are they going to go back to man? Are they going to show man? Go to the 2-3? This is the cat and mouse, the fun part of the game right here. Western Kentucky has had some pretty good wins this season. They're working on their 27th win, if they can get it here tonight. How about when they were down in the Bahamas? Lost to Villanova by eight, but beat Purdue, beat SMU. And there's some pretty good teams down there. They could be, they almost went 3-0. Absolutely. Like you said, Nova's still going. Purdue's still going. I mean, they tested themselves in the out-of-conference schedule, and it's paid off dividends. SMU is a tournament team. They have an NBA player in Shake Milton, but he got hurt for the second half of the season, so that didn't turn out well for them this year. A very good team nonetheless. Smith works his way in. Look at that. Fight who, for it. Who, who alters the shot? Who alters the shot? Colby again. Yeah, Colby again. Tips the ball to Thompson. Now we're shooting foul shots. That is a foul on Waters, and his night is done. That is his fifth personal foul. And you have to you have to go back to the late 80s for this stat, but say it as you may, whoever they've played. Regardless, non-conference opponents, Oklahoma State is 214 and 8 since the late 80s. Taking on non-conference opponents here at home. And this is for a trip to New York. Averett, no. Offensive rebound, McGriff, and he got fouled. Fans catch every moment of the 2018 NCAA Women's Championship on the ESPN Family Networks. For more information, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Johnson with just his second personal foul for Western Kentucky. And McGriff can bring them within seven, but just under a minute to go here tonight. And there's the foul by Carroll. Oh my God. They're going to turn it into a foul shooting contest. You said Coach Stansbury is 35. We saw a graphic. You didn't say it. 35 and 0. Yeah. When leading with under five minutes. Yeah, and at the time, there was four and a half to go. They were only up by two. He, 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 that old dog right there is. Then circled the barn a few times. Yeah. I mean, he knows what he's doing. 14 years, Mississippi State. Averett. Stay at home. He's driving the pass, not the shoot. Solomon couldn't get the rebound. Hollingsworth does, and another foul. And just 42.5 seconds remain, and it's an eight-point ball game in favor of the Hilltoppers. And that was terrific discipline right there by the Hilltoppers. As we said all night, Averett, when he's, when he's penetrating, he's penetrating the pass. They stayed at home. He didn't want to shoot that. He was looking for someone to pass through. They stayed at home on the shooters. He ends up taking a shot he doesn't want to take. Now Hollingsworth is adding to his 27 points, now 28 points. Is this the final game in the careers of Kendall Smith, Jeffrey Carroll, Mitchell Solomon for Oklahoma State? And we shall see. There's Solomon. What a job he's done throughout. Averett. The lead is nine. 
Smith, they need it. They got it. Three ball. Timeout. Six point game. Two possession game with 34 seconds. We've we've seen stranger things happen this year. We have. But how about for the Hilltoppers? Can that man, Hollingsworth, will them to victory? He's had one special night, though, hasn't he, coach? He has the freshman, as we said, is wired to score. He just, he, he's, he's got the knack. He's a prolific when it comes to putting the ball in the basket. Stays in attack mode, can score outside, can score off the dribble. Just a freshman. I mean, and, and we can talk about the graduate transfers with, with Thompson, with Colby, you know, but this freshman group, and Anderson didn't have a great night tonight. You know, and I think he's going to be terrific. The Madison product, and, you know, to go along with Hollingsworth, this freshman class has, is, is a nice foundation for Western Kentucky. No doubt. Hollingsworth, his career high is 30. He's got 28 tonight. How about what this NIT and postseason experience could do for this young group moving forward? You know, I, I think that's what's beneficial. You get a, a taste of success. You know, I also think of that, that, that Penn State team led by Tony Carr, Jeff Gardner, a younger team. The four of their team are sophomores going to the guard, understanding it could really carry over into next year, the momentum, the feeling of winning, and understanding what it takes to win tough games like this, without a doubt, could boost this Western Kentucky team. And I also think that the young Penn State team also. Ball gets about to Bearden. They try to get a steal, and there's going to be a foul. Cameron McGriff for this third. You know, I want to say this, and we still have 29 seconds left. We don't know how it's going to end. You know, but under difficult situations, Coach Boynton has done an outstanding job this year. An outstanding job, as he has said. You know, the foundation is laid. This group is the foundation for what's to come. Well, and we heard some of his locker room speech pregame, and he said, guys, Paul, you changed the perception of this program in one season. And with an almost sellout here tonight of about 13,000 people, I would say so, right? 100%. I mean, he's come in, and, and now, as he said in his pregame speech, the country knows that OK State basketball is still for real. There's, there hasn't been a drop off. There's not going to be a drop off. But tonight, Western Kentucky we just went on the road and beat USC on Monday night. Now here in Stillwater, Oklahoma, in one crazy environment. 17.2 seconds away from heading to the Big Apple. I, I, I really like watching this team play. I really like watching this Western Kentucky team play. You can tell they love each other. And for a group, as we said at the top, only one person returning from last year, Justin Johnson. But this group believes in each other. They play hard for each other. It's fun watching them play. Here's the ovation for Kendall Smith. Heading to the sideline, the graduate transfer, start his career at UNLV, Cal State Northridge, his final game. Jeffrey Carroll is next. As Johnson and the Hilltoppers season will continue. Carroll has played his final collegiate game for the Cowboys. Big 12 third team selection. His career coming to a close. And with 15 seconds to go, with Western Kentucky. I was going to say with 15 seconds to go. Western Kentucky goes pimping to New York with a whole lot of sweat. <laughs> Averett, final shot. The Cowboys and the Hilltoppers, what a battle that we witnessed here tonight. Quarterfinals of the NIT, it belongs to Western Kentucky. They defeat Oklahoma State on the road by eight, and they're heading to the semifinals of the NIT in New York City. That's all for us now to our next quarterfinal matchup. Utah at St. Mary's. Enjoy that one, everyone.